Hello and welcome to Firearm Freedom. This is gonna be a little bit of a different video today because as you can see, we are out at the range. As always, before we get this video started, if you guys are looking for a way to support everything that I do here on the Firearm Freedom channel, then you can head down below to the description and check out the links to the Firearm Freedom merchandise store and also the Subscribe Star account. Of course, if you guys aren't looking for a way to donate to the channel, then you can just simply watch these videos. Hit that subscribe button, ring the bell. All of that support really does help defeat the YouTube algorithms that are constantly pushing down gun content here on the platform. The reason why we are out at the range today is because we are testing the new Mira Safety slash Mira Tactical Level 4 ceramic plates. We're gonna be shooting these plates with a wide variety of different calibers, including 30-06 black tip, which is gonna be the strongest caliber that these plates are rated for, and it's actually multi-hit rated. So what we're gonna be doing is real-time shooting these plates, and between each round, we're gonna see the back face deformation and see if any of these rounds actually pass through. There's been a couple of different tests already out there on YouTube in regards to these plates, but I haven't seen any of these tests actually hit them with aught six black tip, so that should be an interesting thing to see. And as you can see, probably here behind me, we have them actually taped to a box of dirt and sand and different things like that, so the box actually should not tip over, it should hold strong. And before we get into the actual shooting of this video, you guys know full disclosure as always. Mira Safety did actually send me me these plates to check out. They sent me three of these plates for free and they did not ask me to do any sort of a positive review or anything like that. They just simply wanted me to shoot them, see if they hold up and report to you guys exactly what I see. The two other plates I've actually been running in my Ferro Concept Slickster plate carrier now for a few weeks and I am going to be doing a separate review on just how those plates are feeling in the carrier and how they're holding up after running at the range for a few weeks now. If you guys guys do actually want to support the channel, there will be a bit.ly link down in the comment section. That's going to be pinned down in the comment section. You guys should know that if you do click on that link and purchase something from Mira's website, I do get a small commission off of that link. So that is an affiliate link for Mira Safety. If you guys are not looking to support the channel, but you still want to check out the plates, then obviously just go right to Mira's website and buy them from there. But any support does really help out the channel, and I really do appreciate appreciate it. Without any other further ado, let's hit this plate with aught six black tip and go from there. Keith, if you want to show the camera that black tip, get a little bit closer just so that you guys can see, that is black tip aught six and we're going to be shooting it out of a standard M1 Garand. We're probably sitting at right about 20 yards here and in one shot we're going to head up this first round. We are going to hit dead center in the plate. So Keith, whenever you're ready, All right, let's take a look and see what we got. So you guys are gonna be able to see a lot of this stuff a little bit closer up with these two cameras here. And as annoying as it gets, we are going to remove the tape each time and show you guys any sort of back face deformation on the plate. So let's go ahead and get this tape off. I'm surprised that tape even held. All right, well, so we got no pass through, but we do have a good amount of back face deformation. I would probably say maybe about almost an inch of back face deformation, but as you guys can see, no pass through at all. And it smoked that ceramic and you actually can see right there Surprisingly, still have some of the jacket. Oof, and it is hot. You got some of the jacket there as well. Next is gonna come 762 by 54, so let's get set up for that. We're gonna take another hit with standard 762 by 54R out of a PSL, and we're gonna hit it hopefully probably about two inches high and to the right of the center shot that we hit with the black tip. Keith, whenever you're ready. All 
All right, a little bit to the right, but we still got enough distance away from the other hole that we should be okay. All right, let's see what we got. So I'm already noticing a little bit of the fabric is pushed out. Oof, yeah, back face deformation is real good on that 762 by 54 r You can see it is almost, I'd say about a perfect inch away from the black tip aught six that, that you guys first saw, but we still do not have any pass through. Now I can feel separation here. I would imagine it's separation from this padded section on the outside of the plate because I don't feel really anything else as far as ceramic separating or breaking, but I would say after two very heavy hits from some hardcore rifle rounds, that plate is starting to feel it. Would you survive it with that back face deformation? I would say with a trauma pad, probably, but you are definitely gonna be having a bad day. Next up, we're gonna be hitting it with 308. Again, another full-size rifle cartridge. All right, so the third round we're gonna be hitting this with is standard XM80 308. Brought out the M1A to give it a 22-inch barrel. For those of you guys that don't already know, speed is generally what defeats armor. So a lot of people would think something like a 12 gauge slug or something like that would just destroy armor. But a lot of the time it is the faster moving bullet. And generally when you have a longer barrel, that bullet is gonna be traveling even faster than it normally would out of a shorter barrel. So I'm gonna try as hard as I can here to hit it at the upper portion of the plate. So we can give it the best chance possible of stopping this one. Okay. Oof. Let's see. That hole is surprisingly much larger. So I'm not quite sure why that hole was so much larger than the others. Let's go ahead and cut it off and check it out. All right, so you can see we have the entrance there. We got no pass through, but with that being said, you can see all the, the splitting that's going on here on the side. So at this point, this is now taken a 30-06 black tip. It has taken a 762 by 54R and now the 308. Surprisingly, out of the bunch, as you can see, the 308 had the largest entrance hole out of the bunch. I don't really know why that would be because you're really working with the same size projectiles, but it did not pass through. So take that for what you will. You'll notice that if I squeeze together here, all of that is just stitching. So again, I'm not gonna count that as a pass through. You can see all the polyurethane and ceramic being pushed back here. And I definitely feel the ceramic starting to get, you know, a little bit crunched up, but it is still holding strong in certain areas of the plate. So I'm gonna continue to go until we get a pass through. Pass -through. The biggest point in this video is to actually try to make this plate fail and just show you guys where it is failing at. So again, I wanna reiterate, the goal is to make a round pass through. Which round will pass through, that we do not know. So next up, we have a 20 inch BCM AR with standard 62 grain green tip. Out of a 20 inch AR, you're cooking with quite a bit more velocity and green tip is generally well known for wreaking havoc on armor a lot of the time. So let's go ahead and see the results from this. I'm gonna to try to hit it slightly low of center. All right, let's see what we got. All right. Go ahead and cut the tape off. This box is definitely not having a good day. A 
we did move the plate up slightly and put it on two by fours to make sure we didn't hit our platform here. So if you guys are wondering the difference. So we have the entrance hole there and we do not have any pass through. Surprisingly, back face deformation is actually not too terribly bad on that green tip. No cracking on the bottom of the plate as far as the stitching and still holding relatively strong. You guys can see there, again, the entrance compared to the other three. Next up, we have a standard 74 here, relatively standard, with 545 by 39. And it is just standard like wolf, 545 by 39, right? Okay, cool. So we're gonna try to hit it up towards the top of the plate, which should get interesting because I don't feel too much ceramic left up there. So let's see what happens with the 545. Keith, whenever you're ready. Oof. <laughs> Let's see what we got. I actually didn't see the, the impact on that. Huh. Maybe in the same hole as the 308 or off to this. Ooh, interesting. All right, so that one, I don't know that it hit anything other than the gel. <clears throat> Something blew through the cardboard. Yeah, we got a pass through. That's it. That's I just right on the edge, though. It's right on the edge, so I don't know. You want to take another shot at it? Yeah, let me show the camera here real quick. Retape it up, and then I would like to hit that more again in the center. We have our entrance hole here, and you guys can see that it really just didn't have too much of an entrance hole. Now, I would imagine that's because it really just hit a lot of that foam backing. And you can see that it just pushed the rest of the polyurethane and the rest of the fabric that's back there to catch the round back. And obviously, as you can see, we had a pass through out on the side. I don't 100% wanna say that that's a true pass through yet, because as I'm feeling with my hand, I just don't really feel any sort of ceramic material. So what we're gonna do is try to move it a little bit more in the middle where I do feel a little bit of ceramic and I wanna see if we can get a pass through again. If we do, we're gonna know 100% that that 545 punched through. If not, we'll know that the plate may have stopped it in the center. Take number two with the 545. Uh, Keith, if you can, try to strike it high, but as much in the middle as possible. Right in the R? Uh, right, yeah, right in the R or slightly above it would be perfect. Okay. All right, whenever you're ready. Perfect. Now let's see if we get a pass through on that. Looks like it was dead center, right above our first aught six black tip. Obviously larger entrance holes, so that means we probably did hit the ceramic or what's left of it. Oof, this tape's getting a bit interesting to cut. Huh? Okay. No pass through. So that was dead center. You can see just high of our aught six black tip. And like I was kind of thinking, we got no pass through. So the last standard caliber that we are going to be trying at the plate is going to be 762 by 39. I have two different cartridges. The first is standard steel full metal jacket, and then I also have steel hollow points. I'm gonna throw one round of full metal jacket and one round of hollow points. It'll probably be on the lower portion of the plate, so we will see if we get any pass through. It should have a better chance of pass through with the full metal jacket rather than with the hollow point. I'm gonna try as hard as I can to get my shot placement true. This older arsenal trigger is pretty rough, but we'll see. All right. Let's see what we got. Okay. You can already see the remaining ceramic falling out on the platform. Now, 
gonna have very interesting no pass through so still holding strong back face deformation at this point is ridiculous but it is holding strong that was with a full metal jacket next is going to be the 762 by 39 hollow point at this point i really don't have too much of a clear plate but i'm going to go ahead and aim for the upper portion where we don't have as much ceramic we'll see what the hollow point does Oof, I may have hit a little bit low. That's all right, we're gonna see. Looks like we got a lot of a, a lot of, a lot of a entrance hole here. Jesus, all right. Let's see what the deal is. Oof, all right. I'll be honest with you guys, I have no idea where that shot landed. I would imagine somewhere in here. Um, and still, so this was from the 545 that ran off the side and I did not get any hit more towards the side of the plate, but surprisingly there still is no, no pass through. Now, at this point, again, back face deformation is ridiculous. The entire plate is essentially curved in half, but I just wanna see what we can get to actually pass through this thing. All right, guys, so the last round that we are gonna be throwing at it is this Nosler 243 55 grain Armageddon. This thing is smoking out of the barrel at around 3,800 feet per second. So it is a 55 grain pill going almost 4,000 feet per second. We're gonna be shooting it out of this Henry single shot rifle. And I am just gonna try to nail it in any spot that I don't see a ginormous hole in, which is gonna be a little bit difficult right now. And this will be the last round we shoot at it. Let's see what we got. Oh yeah, we got some pass through on that one. <laughs> Definitely some pass through. <sighs> Let's see what we got here. <sighs> yeah, I would say that you are good for all military cartridges, but I'll tell you what, if you're running around in the boog, and you got somebody, it's a good old redneck in the woods with a 243 and a single shot, I think you might be smoked. Oh dear God. Yeah, we got, we got a nice old pass through there. No stopping that 243 traveling almost roughly 4,000 feet per second. And looks like my entrance hole is actually right about here. So you could make the argument that at this point there is not too much ceramic left. If possible, I'm gonna see if we have one more round of that 243. <laughs> I don't even know why I'm doing this at this point, but I do wanna try to see if I can get a hit right here where there is a little bit of ceramic left. I'm gonna aim a little bit low and we're gonna hope for the best, but that was definitely our first pass through. I'm gonna try as hard as I can to actually hit this thing in the ceramic. We're hoping for the best here. I'm gonna to try to hit low and a little bit more to the left. Oof. Let's see what we got. Looks like that shot placement was a bit better. If this place stopped that round, I will be very, very impressed, but man, this plate is smoked at this point. And my GoPro is probably absolutely demolished after that one, but. Wow. All right. Oof. I got ceramic falling everywhere. Looks like that round impacted somewhere in this area, probably right about here. And you can see that ceramic, no pass through. So very impressive it stopped somewhere in this area 
that 243 traveling almost 4,000 feet per second, 55 grain pill. We did get passed through in the center. That was obviously where there is no ceramic. So man, it still stopped it. My final thoughts on the plate is that it performed incredibly well. I think you're gonna see this with a lot of level four ceramic plates, which is why I really, really do think that ceramic is going to be the way to go. At this point with the 243, the first round passing through the back, as you can see there, there was no ceramic left at that point. So you're pretty much hitting just this small, it almost looks like a Kevlar layer on the back with the polyurethane. And what you're getting with that is pretty much at that point, I would imagine like level 3A protection. So obviously that rifle round is gonna zip right through. But as you guys can see that second round, we got no pass through. Now at this point, I think it's obviously goes without saying that if you were to take this much abuse, you would probably be long dead, but you are not actually getting that many rounds passing directly through. It is also worth noting that one of the issues with ceramic is that once you start hitting them this many times, you ruin all of the ceramic that is there and it starts falling and cracking down. So you still have a lot of the protection towards the bottom of the plate but with multi-hit, you generally start running into issues taking multiple hits in the areas without ceramic. Now, I believe that this still took all of the rounds that it was rated for like a champ, and at that point, there really wasn't too much ceramic left, and it was stopping a few of those rounds in the same areas when we first started shooting the plate. So I would say that this Mira safety plate or Mira tactical plate did pass no problems at all. And I will mention as well that with steel armor at this same round count, the issues that you start having is not pass through, but is actually spall. A lot of people don't realize when they're doing videos on YouTube shooting a steel plate, they're hitting it a bunch of times and nothing's passing through. That's all great, but the issue is that the spalling is so bad out the sides that you would have died any Anyways, from spall going up into your face and your head and your neck and your pelvic area. So that is a big issue and that issue is not prevalent with the ceramic plates. We can't end this video without talking about price point, right? These plates retail at $249.99. That's gonna put them as one of the most expensive level four plates that are out there. They are relatively comparable with some of the higher end plates. And I do believe, although they are not officially NIJ certified at the moment, they are going through the NIJ certification process. They are certified to stop up to NIJ standards, but there is a difference in the NIJ certification and just tested the NIJ standards. It is made with foreign made stuff, I believe from Asia or China, and then assembled and quality controlled here in the US, and of course tested here in the US. Take that for what you will. As far as a message to mirror safety, I would definitely say, if at all possible, if you could reduce the uh, cost even slightly down to the $200 area, I think these plates are gonna sell quite a bit better. You guys are still gonna probably sell a ridiculous amount of them at the 249 area, just with how the demand is right now for plates. But for just my two cents, and you guys know I always give a totally honest and unbiased review, I would say that the price at the moment is just a little bit high and it would be a lot better if it came down just, just a little bit to be a little bit more competitive with some of the other plates that are on the market. If you guys have any questions about these level four mirror safety plates, let me know down in the comment section and you guys know I absolutely will get back to you. While you're down there, check out the links in the description to the Firearm Freedom Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram account. I have daily content coming out on all three of those platforms that you guys are not going to wanna to miss. As always, thank you so much for watching and stay tuned for more great videos to come soon.